I want to talk about the um, probability distributions, and in particular, we're going to focus on the normal probability distribution. And as always with my videos, I, I try to remind students while watching that uh, I'm focusing on the content. If I say things about a particular class, it may or may not be yours. It's just that I'm teaching out of a, a book that I feel does the best job. And uh, it's, we change books and uh, we have updates on the additions. And I teach several different types of statistics courses. So, so again, uh, remember that if I say something about an upcoming exam or whatever, that just kind of ignore those comments and focus on the uh, material, which uh, in this video is the normal distribution. Uh, normal probability distribution, you'll see. Uh, and here we're going to talk about the, the standard normal distribution. Okay, again, the standard normal, a uh, specific one, and then applications. And we'll look at some of the lots and lots of applications of the normal distribution. And uh, then we'll talk about what a sampling distribution is, uh, something called the Central Limit Theorem. And then if we get to it, probably not this video, the next one will have some talk about uh, normal approximations to the uh, binomial distribution. So we'll see how far we can get on this one. And uh, so I, I want to just kind of give you a, a bigger picture again. These are the objectives here for each of the sections. And um, so I'm not going to go through all of those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just get started talking about the uh, normal distribution in general. And uh, remember that when we were in probability, we had uh, ended up some of the basic ideas of this classical probability. Uh, using a sample space approach and some of the formulas. And then we went into a discussion on discrete and continuous random variables. So a random variable was a function. And the uh, function had outputs that were probability. So that seemed to make sense. We were kind of taking a, a math approach to probability, a math-like approach. And then uh, we said that, again, there were some things with discrete random variables that we wanted to talk about. And we went through and looked at the mean and standard deviation. And then um, we did a couple application problems. We looked at the binomial uh, distribution was a very popular discrete random variable or random uh, probability distribution. And then we said that we were only going to look at the binomial and kind of move forward uh, because there were some issues with dealing with those formulas. The sample spaces became uh, so large so quickly that uh, we had issues, even with the technology that we had, we, we end up saying, hey, that's, that's a little bit you know, way beyond what we could really deal with in statistics. And so... So we were searching for another approach to finding probabilities. And that's what this chapter is all about. It's taking what we refer to as a, um, a continuous random variable to approximate the probabilities for a discrete random variable. And the most popular continuous distribution, OK? So if we look down here under characteristics, so the normal distribution and the definition it says if a continuous random variable, and that's what he's that's important there, that idea of that it is a um, curve, and you'll see the shape of it over here. It's got this kind of shape to it that you know we find has lots of applications. And so it's is a continuous um, random variable, continuous probability um, density curve. If a continuous random variable has a distribution with a graph that is symmetric and bell-shaped, and that's what they're showing here, 
symmetry about the mean here, okay? So this shape, this sloping down on the right side is the same as the sloping down on the left. It's like a reflection, right? A mirror reflection about this line here. And it can be described by any equation given as the formula. Now let's get on. Here we have this curve, right? And we're going to take this curve and use it to approximate probabilities, right? And we said, okay, it's a uh, function. Now here's the equation of that function. So if we look down here, formula 6.1, and see this y equal e to the negative one half, that's x minus mu, the mean over the standard deviation squared, all over sigma squared. So it looks pretty crazy. Um, that, that looks like a lot of work, and it is. And because what we're uh, going to work with and this type of function is that we need to make some um, simpler, we need to simplify this some way. So can we look at the area under this curve and associate it with probabilities? And that's what we do. Now to find area under a curve, uh, you used to have to take like um, calc one and calc two and that, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people did. And you'd have to take and try to integrate this function or probability functions that you were working with. And in fact, this one doesn't even have a nice integration to it. You have to use an approximation technique to integrate this thing accurately. And then, and so it was like, wow, we're trying to make it easier because we want people to work with statistics. We know that it's valuable and it can help people make. So the bottom line is, remember that statistics helps us make better, it can help us make better decisions, right? We have to really do a lot of things and understand it to be able to, to have confidence in those statements. But So we don't want to use this formula, even though it is the formula for this curve, the shape of this curve, just like in algebra, you learn formulas for a straight line or formulas for a parabola. You know, equations for different types of polynomials. Well, this is the equation. This And um, so, so what we do is we say, well, um, so that everybody can use, uh, we're going to figure out a lot of the values and create a table, and then people can just look up things on a table. And we start with what we call the standard normal distribution, okay? So that's why this is called the standard normal distribution. We are looking at one particular normal distribution, right? This isn't representing all of them. This is representing one, and the characteristics of them, uh, for the most part, are the same except for this. Now, they all have this bell shape, okay? Kind of like this. This. Uh, now, number two here, the mean equal to zero is just particular to the standard normal. Okay. And the standard deviation, this mu is the um, symbol we use for population mean. And the sigma is the symbol we use for the or the population standard deviation. So, so we got some, you know, a theoretical distribution here that we're dealing with. Mean of zero, standard deviation one, it's continuous, okay? And another important thing to remember is that the probability of any single value on this is equal to zero. And that kind of is going to drive us, and I'll explain later more in depth, but that's driving how we're going to deal with these probabilities. You know, not only this formula is a problem, the idea that the probability is in a continuous curve, any single value is equal to zero is a problem. But we can fix that, and we, we do a pretty good job of uh, fixing that. And he starts out, and he um, tries to build this idea of area under the curve. And he said area in algebra is simply height times width or length times width. or you can, But it's the um, – when they talk about this, they're talking about a rectangular region, right? So he says, okay, uniform distribution is kind of shaped like a rectangle. Right, so here's our rectangle. 
So if I want to find the area of this thing, okay, well, we just take length times width or height times length, whatever you want to call them. This area here is equal to one because you take this this distance from here is five. And this distance from here to here is 0.2 probability. They're saying that 0.2 times 5 gives us 1, an area of 1. Okay, that's, again, that's that's okay for an algebra. And then he goes here and he says, well, what if you want to find the area just between 2 and 5? Now, these are waiting times in minutes. So let's say that you wanted to find the odds that someone was going to have to wait between 2 and 5 minutes. Well, the probability of that would just be whatever area this is. <clears throat> so we would take 2 times 5, all right? Or 2 to 5 is 3. That's right. The distance from here to here is 3 units. That's this number here. The height of this thing is 0.2. So 0 0.2 times 3, it gets 0 0.6. So there would be a 60% probability of people waiting between 2 and 5 minutes. Okay, so it sounds reasonable, and it seems pretty easy. And uh, actually, working with the normal distribution is exactly just the same thing. The only difference is, is that we know that the normal curve is not length times width. It, it's not a nice rectangle. But that's okay. We can still use a table to give us the values instead of multiplying them out. So there's no difference in the required number of steps involved. It's just a slight change in how we first look at this. So it says here the standard normal. Well, think of this, you know, if this was like that rectangle we were just looking at. So we would want to find the area all here, first of all, was 1, right? The area under the big square uh, rectangle that we looked at was 1. And uh, we've got 0 in the middle because the mean is 0. So the mean goes in the middle. Remember, the standard normal mean is 0 right here. Standard deviation is 1. So from here to here is one standard deviation. From here to here is another one, here to here. So we go 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative, negative 2. Those negatives are just saying that you're to the left of the mean. All right, to the left of the middle here. This is to the right of the middle. And we can find probabilities by the area. Okay. So now he talks about regions. You could have area to the left of some value, area between two values, or area to the right of those values. So there's only three possibilities when we're looking for, I'm going to back up to that picture again. When we want to break this up, all the problems are going to be one of three types again. Area to the left of some value, area to the right of some value, or area between some values. Okay. And as we run through some problems, again, it'll you'll catch on to this usually pretty quickly. So, so he looks at a problem here and he says, okay, we have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So that means we can use the standard normal. And we want to find some values right we're going to find some values now what he's doing here in this next page is if you you know want to use the table that's okay but it's going to be a disadvantage so you need to use the the ti which we're going to go to so i'm i'm going to skip this what he's showing here with the table and why is there a table i want to emphasize this why is there a table well, it's because the function that we have to decide this would be nice if we could just integrate the function, but uh, it's very, very difficult. It's extremely much easier to just have a table 
or it's even easier to use the calculator. Okay, so we are going to focus on, so you need your TI-84, whatever calculator you're using, and he's showing here, right, some distances, right? And I'm going to start with the calculator and give you some value. So uh, we're going to move up ahead. There's area between. And I'm going to uh, put this down. Okay, good. And right now, remember that we're not applying this to anything. We're just learning how to find the probabilities. Then we'll look at applications. So uh, just kind of focus on the idea that we're learning a new way to find probabilities without using formulas, complicated formulas. This is much easier once you get to do this. So let's say that we have, first of all, an application that we know that is fairly normal. Okay, so let's look at the standard normal distribution. Okay. So I want to find some probabilities. I have to assume up front that the distribution of values are fairly normal. Okay, so let's say that we're trying to find students' test scores uh, on a particular standardized exam. Okay, and uh, we have all the standardized scores. Okay, so we can use the standard normal. When I say standardized scores, what I mean is that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. Okay. So again, this doesn't just work for anything. You can't just apply the standard normal distribution to anything. It only works, again, when you have a normal distribution of scores with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Okay. And so we'll do a couple problems. So I'm going to draw, all right, kind of that bell shape. And I don't want that. This uh, tablet's got this automatic thing. And that's not what I wanted to do. Ink to share. All right. Well, I'm going to leave that there and we're going to ignore it because I have to figure out how to use this tablet better. So just forget about this. All right. Let's go over here. So Let's say that I have a there we go standard normal distribution and in the middle right remember the mean is zero and we don't have to write that down all the time I'm just kind of reminding you that but let's say that I want to find the area under this curve between one and two. Now, the standard normal distribution, these numbers one and two, three, this is referring to standard deviations. So how many people fall between one and two standard deviations, All right? So I'm gonna put this right here. And uh, so what we're gonna do is use a function on your calculator. It's normal CDF. First number is where we start. 
we're going to go from 1 to 2. And then we put in the mean and standard deviation. So this function we were going to use a lot. You need to get used to this function. It'll be look, we'll use this a lot and ones that are kind of like this. All right, so we have the first two numbers define the area that you're looking for. Second two numbers mean the standard deviation, okay? So, all right, we got that. We're going to get the calculator out here. And you go to second VARS key, which is this D-I-S-T-R, stands for distribution. You see you got lots of distributions. We want number two, normal CDF, which means cumulative density function. Number one is normal probability density function. If you're trying to find probability or area surrounding one value, we want an entire region. So number two, normal CDF, enter the lower, meaning the left value, right, the left number there, which is 1. 1. The upper, again, that's the 2, right? Right, the one on the right. So they're boundary values. Where does your shaded region start and end? Well, it goes from 1 to 2. Mean is 0. Standard deviation one, I hit paste. And again, this calculator, if you don't have the newer CI, the, the plus, CE plus, or whatever, you may not look like this, but I'll show you. When I click enter here, there's what yours, the older ones look like, just like that. You put in normal CDF, one, comma, two, there's your comma key right here above the seven. So you put in one comma two, this is left bound, right bound, mean and standard deviation. So you're doing the exact same thing. So don't think your calculators are any different. There's one page difference. I don't know why they did that. That's just, and you just hit enter. So everybody hits enter. Everybody gets to the same place and everybody hits enter and there's our value, 0.1359. So that's roughly about 14%. So, so we, we were able to find a probability without those formulas, independent, dependent, all that stuff that we did before with factorials and all that. And yeah, you might think this is an approximation, but if you think about it, this thing is incredibly close. It's not really much of an approximation. It's, you can get it pretty exact. Uh, there's techniques to get it out as many decimal places as you want. So, so we're in good shape now. So that, that's the um, easy one there, right? That's the easy one. All right, let's do uh, another one of these. Let's see. And again, we're going to do a, a standard normal, and I'm going to okay. So we're going to clear it this time. We're not going to ignore that ink to shape. I'm not sure why that's on. Active pen. I don't know what that is. I'm trying to shut that off, but let's clear this out and we're going to do this again. All right. So, so we have mean zero standard deviation equal to one. And I want to find the probability between negative two and whoop, 
0.5. So we're trying to find this area. Why are we trying to find the area? Well, we said that whatever this area turns out to be will be the probability. So even though I say I'm, we're trying to find area under the curve, we are finding probabilities. So it's kind of like we're just redoing that chapter on probability again. And then we're just uh, doing the problems uh, without the factorial notation and so on and coming up with the same thing. Okay, so, so mean is zero, right? And standard deviation one, and we know to find area, we simply use normal CDF negative two comma point five comma zero comma one. All right, here's my boundary values, mean standard deviation. We're going to pull up the calculator and a clear second function distribution. Number two, enter right. Now we have to change that to uh, use the negative at the bottom. Don't use the subtraction key. Negative is down at the bottom, negative two. And you'll get an error uh, if you don't. Upper is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Mean zero standard deviation, one. paste, enter. So we're all get to there. Enter 0.6687, right? So our probability of being in there, assuming normal distribution with those parameters, right? All right, so, all right, let's. Now, we have some other types here. Uh, let's, let's do kind of run through here, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. And uh, let's, let's say something like this. Let's do greater than 1.5. So strictly greater than. So I want to go from here. And this thing goes out supposedly infinitely. For our purposes, it doesn't. Theoretically, it does. But we're approximating. Because once it gets out a certain point, there's nothing else under there. It doesn't contribute to the probability once we get to a certain point. Okay. Your calculator doesn't have an infinity key. That means we have to make up one. So our boundary value for infinity is going to be E99. I want to find the area under the standard normal distribution between 1.5 and greater or more. I should say greater than 1.5. So this is remember, this is infinity. All right, so how do we get that in the calculator? Let's take a look at that. Let's clear this out. I'm going to go second distribution, number two. All right, we start the same. Everything's the same. Now, the lower bound right here is 1.5. So I put in 1.5, comma, whoops, 1.5. And on some of your calculators, you'll put comma. The other guys, you'll just go 1.5 and then go to upper. Here's upper right here, E99. To get that in, you do second function, the double E key above the comma key, E99, and then mean and standard deviation. Okay. Make sure you use this double E above the comma key, 99. We're going to do paste. Enter, and there's my area. My probability relating to this area is 0 0.0668. Okay, uh, let's do one on the other side. Put this down. 
All right. And then we're going to do a, uh, again, standard normal, mean equal to zero, standard deviation equal one. Now, remember, some people might ask, is it always going to be mean of zero, standard deviation of one? Well, no, in reality, it's like never those. And when we start doing applications, it'll never be those, okay? Probably, or we'll say rarely ever, do we find a distribution that looks exactly like that. These numbers will definitely change here very soon. All right, what are we doing? Finding probabilities. What are we using? Well, we're using this curve right here, all right? We're using a normal probability distribution. So it's, that's why we call it a probability curve because we're finding probabilities. We have inputs or our sample space, outputs or probabilities. That's a random variable. All right, let's go find a probability less than two. Okay, so I got two or negative two. There we go, negative two. I want, what's the probability or the likelihood that we would be less than two or to the left of two on a number line or a line. Remember, this thing goes out to infinity, but we're going to stop it and call it negative E99. Okay, negative infinity is what we're representing with this. All right, so let's see. What do we need? We need to go on our calculator now, right? Pull up that calculator and uh, clear this out. Oops, clear. Second function, distribution, normal CDF, and okay. So the lower or leftmost value here on the shaded region is negative E99. Use this negative down here, negative. Second function, double E key, E99, upper is negative two, negative two, mean is zero, paste. All right, again, here's where everybody should be, negative E, so we're finding that area, and it's about 0 0.0227. That's our probability, right? Remember, these are negatives. Notice, this is not a negative probability. There are no negative probabilities. Probabilities range between 0 and 1. And that's a number between 0 and 1, right? Positive number. We can always have negative numbers for our inputs into the function. We can never have a negative output on a probability density function, right? Okay, now I want to do uh, a couple more, but with not the standard normal. Okay, not the standard normal. Well, let's put this down. I want to um, show you something, uh, though. Clear canvas. I'm going to bring back my e-text. We're going to jump back to page 104. And I did a separate, uh, let's see. and normally this is in this section. It should be up with that. But if we were to do the probabilities, what we were just doing with the standard normal and set it up nice and evenly, we would have zero in the middle, one, two, three, zero in the middle, negative one, negative two, negative three. And if we use that formula, the, the function of normal CDF, and we put all the areas in between, this is what we would get right here. 34, 34, right? 13, 13, two, two, geez, you know, hardly above zero. That's why I said it kind of stops because once you get past a little beyond three standard deviations, 
There's nothing really out there. Not for what we need. So they call that the empirical rule. This is very important. You know, this is what people used to do when people started using statistics and trying to find probabilities. If they thought something was normally distributed, they would go to this chart. And really, you know, a lot of people didn't have real strong math backgrounds, but they wanted to use statistics. So I said, okay, we just use this normal curve. And this was the standard and still is. Not for all distributions, for things that are mostly normal. This, this is the standard, and, and you'll see I have another video available. It's called the 689599 rule for the distribution, and you can watch that video. But basically, it talks about how people would use it because they would say, well, let's see, let's get a bunch of data, look at the mean and standard deviation, and then let's compute our values. Let's put the mean in the middle, go up one standard deviation and down one, then 68% of all the values would fall in there. And then let's go up the two standard deviations and down two standard deviations. That's what they're showing right here. 95% of the values fall within two standard deviations. And then we'd put in three standard deviations above and below the mean, and you'll see 99.7 fall within that. So that's all you, you know, people really needed to get a rough idea. And so people could use it. You know, you could learn how to use the normal distribution very quickly and then use it to compute or calculate probabilities and not really be have any probability background, not have a real strong math, math background. And uh, it worked for well and then, you know, we need it to become more detailed and, and more specific than just one and two and three. So, so that's an important thing to remember right there again for this unit. And when you talk about the normal distribution, this is kind of like the standard. This was the standard starting point with this new technique for finding probabilities. Okay. We're going to go back up to, and again, I have the other video to show you the example. It's a short video on how it was used, and we'll see. So with the standard normal, and we, we just did the standard normal, and I talked about area under the curve, and it's still kind of like length times width, but just not exactly the same how we get that. And uh, we did the three different possibilities. Skip the table, which is in the back of your book if you want it. And then we want to jump to 2, 42, and let's see where we get. So now what we're really are ready for, it says real applications of the normal distribution. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is take that stuff that we learned and then we're going to apply it to things that are not mean of zero and standard deviation of one. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to stop this video right here. Got enough of information on to get us going. And then uh, we'll go over to the next one and start right here.